Good evening, Crossroads Assembly. This is Pastor Stephen, and uh, we just want to just say thank you for being with us, and thank you all that are here tonight for being with us. Uh, we've got a great lesson planned, and uh, just a wonderful night. Uh, unfortunately, Brother Holden has an ear infection, so he won't be with us. And we, I tell you, we scrape the bottom of the barrel for teachers. Just hit the bottom wood, and there I lay. So I'm going to go ahead and get to share the word with you tonight. So let's just begin everything in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, here tonight for your goodness and your graciousness. God, I pray that everything is said, done, something, God, would be to your glory. God, we need your comfort. We need your blessing. God, we need your touch. And Lord, we just know that we can depend upon you. I love the scriptures that teach us, God, that those who put their trust in you will never be put to shame. God, we love you. We honor and praise you. God, for all of our friends and family, God, that they be going through sicknesses or trials. God, we pray for them. We pray for our nation. God, we pray for our leadership, our president, God, and all that administration. God, we pray, Lord, for our local police officers and our community, our magistrates, God, our mayors and aldermen. God, we pray for God, our governor, Lord, the decisions that they're having to make right now, all of our schools, as they're contemplating opening again. God, we are just, just perplexed on every side, and God, you're still in control. So, Lord, we just give you all honor. God, for all those that, that, that came to here tonight, we just ask you to just give them that special touch of pray in Jesus' mighty name. And can we all say? Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, welcome, Sister Martha Diller. Want to sing for us tonight? Because it's just amazing to me. Next, or this coming Sunday, I'll be 
continuing in 2 Corinthians, and, and where, you know, the Apostle Paul talks about the, the persecutions that he's going through, and all the challenges that he's going through, and yet he's depending upon the Lord. Boy, would that sound like a message we need to hear now? Amen. Amen. So, uh, but anyway, if you would turn with me the Word of God to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and uh, as we did Sunday, we're going to read verses 1 through 7. And, uh, and I want to give you some background and some history, and, and uh, then I want us also to just just really dive in. And again, ask any questions that you'd like to ask. Um, the thing I love, one of the many, many things I love about God's Word is how, how pertinent it is. It's always on time. It's a living Word. And uh, even this that happened in 57 uh, AD, imagine that, it's happening today. One of the things that Paul dealt with, let me share this here, little preach you this Sunday. Imagine if this is the Apostle Paul. Well, one thing that he's writing is he's writing this letter. He's just gone through the, the great uh, shipwreck that we read about in the book of Acts. You may remember that when he was going to Rome, he was shipwrecked. So he's, he's gone through that. He's gone through this, this uh, Acts 19 riot in Ephesus. Okay, and he's been preaching against idolatry. And now he's, he's, I mean, he's having to face a lot. They're bringing him, they're going to kill him. I mean, they're in Ephesus, the, the streets are filled with pagans, and they're praying to their God, and, you know, Paul's saying, hey, there's one true living God, not made of hands, and, and they're like, oh, you should have, and I mean, they're just, I mean, it's erupting like crazy. We find also that the church was talking about him in the end, it's of him because of the persecutions, the challenges. You know, so their eyes are all on the Lord, and they're, all, they're more on what they things look like, Rather than what things really are. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Yes. I mean, it's amazing just yes. how absolutely spot on that God, it, it just seems like the Word of God is today. So, if you can, if you're with me, let's read this together. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, called the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God, born together with all his people throughout Achaia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and, and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, again, he's writing this. And if you notice, this particular segment of introduction is so common. In Corinthians, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, in Ephesians, Galatians, Colossians, uh, Thessalonians, all that he introduces himself with this. Why would you think that it's important for the Apostle Paul to introduce himself this way? Make a clue? Well, go ahead. Yes, Lord James. Who identify who he is. That's right. The, the yeah. letter. Because this letter is going to get passed around. Right? Exactly. And two, they always challenge his apostleship. Yes. Because as we learned about in 1 Corinthians, he has to he has to go back and say, listen, I know an apostle, you know, of unnatural birth. You know, he wasn't one of the original 12. He wasn't one of the 70. As a matter of fact, he was a persecutor of all Christians. Right. Yes. And now we find that on the road to Damascus, he, he, God appears to him. Jesus appears to him. And he is now he has seen Christ. He has had these visions of Christ, which which for, you know which solidifies his apostleship. See, to be an apostle in the New Testament, there's some criteria. You have to have seen Christ physically to have been considered an apostle. So Paul understands there's a lot of debate on that. But Paul had this vision. He had this impartation. He had this visitation from Christ. We find in the last part of First Corinthians. And, you know, Paul talks about that. That Jesus, you know, he appeared to all these others. He appeared <clears throat> finally to, you know, to James and then finally to the disciple of the apostle, you know, the man of order. So again, he's, he's reminding them. It's like his calling part. See, in the assemblies of God, uh, one thing that we do is all of us pastors in the assemblies of God or credential members carry one of these little doodads. See, there's, there's places it, it used to, Austin's have changed a lot. But it used to, before you could go in and visit or work, you know, normally you'd have to stop by the nurse's desk or you might have to stop by the attending's desk and just say, hey, I'm pastor so-and-so. And a lot of times, especially in more secure areas like jail houses or things like that, sometimes you have to show your credentials. And, uh, and that's what the Apostle Paul is doing. So he's saying, listen, uh, this is the Apostle Paul. This is me and my brother Timothy. Your brother, which again is a pagan term, I mean, that's just incredible. He's riding the Corinth, he came from pagan ancestry, and he's using a pagan term like brother. You know that that wasn't an original Christian word. Really? Brother not, was not and sister. We adapted that. Oh. Because again, it was that brother that the commonality, but it wasn't a Christian term. 
It was a pagan term adopted by Christians. So we find that he said, again, he professing disgrace. Verse 3, he says, Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us uh, in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves receive from God. If I came to you tonight and, and say I, I begin to teach a prosperity message. Now, now let me preface this. I'm not saying that we don't prosper in Christ. If you're in Christ, you're already blessed. Okay. It don't matter what's in the bank account. It don't matter what kind of house you live in. If you know Jesus and you're a Christian, you have the greatest of all riches. Amen. But if I came in and I just was telling you, oh, there's nothing going on in the world. Oh, we're all great and happy. Why aren't you happy? Why aren't you smiling? Some of you would just be like that. Lost your mind. Yeah. Don't you know what's going on? Are you that big of a goober? You know? <laughs> so we find that the Apostle Paul is writing this letter to identify what they're going through. They're going through some rough things. They're going through some challenges. The church, in one year, from Paul's first letter of, of structure, a year later, they're just they're ready to forget about Paul. They don't want to give a tithe and offering anymore as far as to give benevolence to the church of Jerusalem. That was one of the reasons that Paul was there to collect this offering because the church of Jerusalem, the Christian church, is going through famine. I mean, imagine a church that you planted. This is your people. And they quit giving. They quit wanting to go. You're their bishop that's helped pioneer that church. You go back to it. And they say, hey, can you just go over there to somebody else's house? We just don't really want you over here. And we find that the Apostle Paul in the first seven chapters of 2 Corinthians he begins to repair the relationship between himself and the Corinthian church. You see, saints of God, the thing is, is the people of God have to be in connection and in relationship. We know that the church, and we found this out, especially through the coronavirus, when we had to separate and do, and do live stream only, we found that we were still a church. We found that we were still people, because the people of God is the church. So Paul's having to address that. He's having to challenge them, refocus them. That it's not on their perception outside of the world sometimes, but we have to identify who we are in Christ and through Christ. You see, guys, the thing, I say this all the time, and I, I just want you to know how biblically founding this is, is sometimes we judge God by our circumstances. If I'm blessed and God's good, have you ever met, met somebody like that? Yeah. And it breaks my heart. A lot of times as a new Christian, I was talking to, uh, you know, Brother Tony Thompson, he came back and saw me today, and, we were talking about this, and you know, a new convert, I mean, some of you remember these, you know, if you were saved during the late 70s, early 80s, I guarantee you, this is what you got. Come on and serve Jesus. Your life will be wonderful. Everything will be glorious. Hallelujah. Come on over. And we're like, oh, I just get saved. I mean, I remember the messages, if you only trusted Jesus, I'm going to do a little hop. Can I do a hop? Yeah. Don't be offended in Facebook. Amen. And I remember, you know, you just need to come to Jesus, and you have that new car. You go up there, you claim to lay hands on it, and it's yours, you know. You can lay claim to anything you want to, but what about the person who already owns it? You can that's right. I'll walk out there and lay hands on Mark's car, but I don't think he's going to hand over the keys. <laughs> you know? Amen. So again, it's so good. It, it sounds so, you just do that so good. I think you've done it. I may have. <laughs> I'm old enough. I may have. If anybody, you know, you can send 1990. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, Florida, Somebody just hit click off. <laughs> but again, the Apostle Paul was reminding them that what they needed and the challenges that they needed, God was not going to just, just build them without putting them through some things or allowing them to go through some things. You know, we're, we're in a place in America that we've never been before. I was reading again, you know, Brother Don Yates. And he may be in a little bit later, but I remember Brother, Brother Don always hands me these wonderful pamphlets when he, after he reads them, um, a, you know, a proxy a network, paperwork, and stuff like that. And this is a gentleman who's much older than I am, the paperwork, you know, the guy who's uh, writes these papers, maybe in his late 70s, I don't know, like that. But he even testifies that there, that there is no, that there is, a, you know, no... Dude, low, ba low battery. Low I'll, battery. Hold on, we're gonna, right, I'm gonna, hold it's going to be bumping for a minute. I don't yeah, think it's making the connection. Because last week it went, no it went battery. completely. Hold on. It's not going in. Sister Tanya, would you go out of the car, ah. into the blue car, yeah, and get just... the uh, power cord? 
It just, oh, wait, wait. Did it go in, maybe? Did it start charging? I, now I don't have any way to know that. <laughs> I tell you what, but it's in there, it's so. In there. So she'll go get the other. Should we need these keys, honey? That one's on. Okay. All right. That's okay. We'll see. Gone. Yeah, because it, it, it was it just off. popped up, but it said low battery. I All knew right. what that little Thank window you. was. It's supposed to be charged. It did that last yeah. thing. Bless your heart, Sister Rhonda, yeah. Brother Old, and they all started singing. And then after the song, Brother Don got started and went. Oh, and so I anyway, it went out. Yeah, yeah we, we were, were all kind of looking at it. So, so we'll right. see. The thing that I want to share with you is if we look at this, it says that the Apostle Paul is writing, he says, You comfort us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble. What do you think Paul's saying? God is comforting me as your leader through right. my troubles so that you could be comforted in any trouble. That's right. What do you think he's saying, my king? What's he saying right there? Is there what about if I'm going to go out here and cut the back? Yeah. And, you know, is there been a time you had to make a splinter from a back of stick in your hand? Mm -hmm. Or maybe a spud stuck in your hand? Yeah. Like, you ever done that? Oh, Lord, I, I stuck one in there before that little bit. For those of you that don't know, if you've ever worked tobacco, Tennessee was tobacco state. Yeah. Yeah. And for those of us that worked tobacco, there was two things when we were going down. Mark shaking his head. He'd been there before. They was what's called the cutters and the spudders. The cutters were the ones who would go through the row and they would lean these stalks back and cut them and hand them back to the sputter. And the sputter, the reason they call them a sputter is because they had a metal spike called a spud that they put on a, a stick, a wooden stick. And when that cutter would hand that stalk back, he would take that stick, or that stalk of tobacco, and he would literally take it up and just sling it on there. And you can hear the, I love that sound, ding. And if you get a good ting, you, as fast as you can cut, that other person will be spudding. So you can ting, ting, ting. I mean, that's money, honey. But I'm telling you what, if I need help with that, and Brother, brother Mike, he's been there before. His dad done farming, he's done farming. Do you think because of what you went, for, you know, went through then, you could help me today? That's what Paul's saying. He's saying that everything I went through, every last thing I endured, I endured for the church. Amen. I endured for the people. And because I, God helped me through this, he, I know that he'll help me through that. See, guys, I want you to know, I sit, I sit in my office and talk to people who go through some pretty challenging stuff. And, uh, you know, I think back over my life, and I'll tell you what, God never wastes your pain. He never wastes your problem. How many, and he uses it. How many of y'all have ever, I mean, let's just be very real for a moment. At the moment you was going through something, you thought it was hell on earth. I mean, it was awful, it was tough, it was rough, you hated it. God, why am I here? Why am I going through this? Did you not love me? But then you go through it. You take your lunch, you go through it. How many of the same thing you just went through, somewhere in your life, somebody comes to you and they need help That's going right. through that same Absolutely. thing? That's what Paul was saying. So he's saying, we're going through our troubles so that you, we can help you through any trouble. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, we also in our comfort abounds through Christ. You see, guys, the world is looking for comfort in all the wrong places. You remember that old country song? Looking for love in all the wrong Yep, the world knew I'd say that. Yeah. He looked at that and he said, listen here. Anyway. But we find that he did that. And, and, you know, the thing is we looked for love in the wrong places. And the world's looking for love in the wrong places. You know, there's no comfort other than the Lord. Because there's opinions. And, and one thing that breaks my heart is the enemy is not just content with driving the wedge in the world. I mean, we're splendid. Racism, you know, political bias. But you know what? That filters. If, if, if it's outside, that's one thing. But when it filters into the church, we've got problems. Yeah. Because we've really got people who cannot get along if you have a different opinion. Yeah, that's right. that's I mean, right. my first thing in kindergarten, one on one, I like bologna. My buddy like peanut butter. <laughs> I punch him in the nose because he don't like my bologna. <laughs> and what's the, what's the principal tell you, honey? You've got to learn to get along. Just because he don't like peanut butter don't mean you be mean. Or don't like you know, bologna don't mean you be mean to him. Anybody ever heard of that one? Yeah, yeah. Why do we forget that lesson? Why have we forgot that lesson? And then we get on Facebook and everything's, you know, all game because we can hide behind it. We'll never meet that person we're slandering. Yes. But what if they're a believer? You see, that the world doesn't judge God by the world. They judge God by his followers. Mm -hmm. We've got to be careful. The Apostle Paul's talking to churches that don't like him. They've really disappointed him. He 
because he's always poor. He's always in some kind of political trouble. He's, I mean, he's, he's been in shipwrecks and all these other kind of things. And, he, you know, he, he doesn't take a salary from the church. He just, you know, he's the apostle. He comes in, he starts the church, and he hands it over to the pastor or the elder. And so they're like, man, you don't have nice clothes. He doesn't speak very well. You know, like I told you, one of my favorite stories comes out of Acts 20 with Brother Ibicus, the young teenager who was up in the third story window when the apostle Paul started the preaching. Never tell you a story about the guy and I'm going to get so many on Facebook. They're going to say, never let him teach me in. But everybody has a different method of teaching or preaching. And the thing is, it doesn't make it wrong. It just makes it different. And I'll never forget my father-in-law. We were, he was preaching a funeral. And it was summertime about like this. And uh, he had worked for the First Baptist Church that day and uh, had mown grass all day long. And this wonderful pastor, and he has gone on to be with the Lord now. But my father-in-law said his, his statement, and he preached the part of the funeral that was his. And then after he got done, the, young, the older gentleman who came up to preach started preaching. And I don't know if you've ever been under this kind of leadership. Like I said, it's not to be offensive. It's just the way it is. Yeah. He, he's, first off, the funeral home had this luxurious chair for the ministers. I've been in a lot of funeral homes. I preached a lot of funerals. But the thing is, the chairs I always sit in might be a little bit leather, but they're a little hard. They're not so comfortable. This was a plush, cushy, swooshy seat. It was 90 degrees outside. The only way they had air conditioning is when they raised the windows. You know, you could have, you have, you have five inch, six inch, and ten inch air conditioning. You know what I mean? Good, good, good. Anyway, it was so hot, and all of a sudden that preacher got up and preached, and that older gentleman got up there, very distinguished looking, and he opened his good King James Bible, and he started preaching. And he would preach like this. Brothers and sisters, I come to you today in the name of the Lord. Needless to say, my sweet father-in-law, who, uh, who had worked all day, was seated in a cushy chair, got warm and cozy, right there like this, and all of a sudden me and Tanya, there's a petition where the singers, we had sung at the funeral, and there's a petition between us, so the fakes, before you get mad at me, they couldn't see us. But they could see Jerry. And then all of a sudden, Jerry goes, <laughs> and about a few minutes in, I see him go. <laughs> I start laughing so hard, it's unreal. Tony's pinching my side. So when we get to heaven, if there's a particular person I have to spend and apologize to, we go, that was the only person. I guarantee you. But the Apostle Paul, man, he was a great, you know, he, he had so much to say. He was probably very learned. And, and some of my greatest professors in college, or, in, or even my teachers in school, the, some of the more learned ones had so much to say, and they didn't have a, the greatest of personalities, they were a lot dry, you know, and, and so Paul's trying to really preach, and he preaches from dawn till midnight, and then it just falls out the window, and he's dead, and then all of a sudden Paul, read it, Acts 9, it's, it's amazing, At, uh, Acts 27 and 12, and then he comes down, and Paul's like, oh, there's a man, you know, and Paul just like any good preacher lays on him, you know, grabs him up, and prays over him, prays over him, God heals him, raises him up, and Paul says, all right, man, let's get back up, right? I've finished the sermon. And he preaches till dawn. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, I can hardly preach every one of the things. Could you imagine that? It's all gone down now. It's all down. I can preach. It's all down. All right, I know. You don't get to hear me much teaching, so we don't go on. But we find these challenges. And guys, I just want you to understand, we know, I'm not pr trying to bring you a woe no message tonight. And, and I did mean to bring you a woe no message. I don't believe that it did Sunday. But it's just, we have to realize what God promised us and what God did not promise us. Right. Okay. Yep. Psalm 34 <laughs> is a song where David... How many of those King David have heard about King David? Man after God's own heart, right? Yep. You need to read about David. 
about it's awesome when he was before Amalek. When he was before Amalek, king of the enemy, you know, he came in, Saul is after him, Saul's already trying to kill him, and Amalek's like, I'm going to kill you too, boy. So what's David going to do? He's scared for his life. You see, guys, the thing that I want you to know, and I God has to deal with my heart, I have been afraid. But I can be very honest with you. Through the corona pandemic, the racial issues, the political biases in our nation, fear has tried to grab hold of my heart. Last week when we had that 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 uh, demonstration, you know, guys, I'll be honest with you. We prayed, and part of the fervor of our prayer was, you know, because of it, the fear. Because when people are angry, I like what one brother said at one of our meetings, you know, that we were at, he said, broken people break people. Yes. Not just emotionally, but physically. Right. They're angry. And yes. some of you are that way. Some of you have a short fuse and a quick temper and hit first and ask questions later, you know. And you had to allow the Lord to help you through that. Yeah. And I know dealing with folks like this, and all we saw on, you know, this microcast that we call the news, you know, it magnifies these, these, these riots, these things. These, but again, we have over, you know, what is it, 330 million people live in the United States? And with, if you took all these groups, Antifa and Black Lives Matter, KKK, all these other white supremacists, black supremacist groups, uh, the, you know, the, the Crips, the Bloods, the Latin, Latin Kings, all these groups, they're still a small minority when you look at the vast, vastness of the population of the United States. But what have you found in the last few weeks? The world's out of, it's the whole world. So we have to understand that what God does is promise us is that we won't have trouble. In Psalm 34, David is there with Amalek. He's writing this. This is his real thoughts. This is, but at this time, he's before King Amalek, and he is pretending to be insane. <laughs> <laughs> the same guy who, when he was little, killed a bear and a lion. Who killed the lion? Come on now. Yeah, yeah. The same one who they chanted, David is killed. King Saul is killing his thousands, and David is tens of thousands. Now go before King Amalek. You've got to read the scripture. And he's like, well, he's drooling, he's got his beard all full of slobber, you know, and like, oh, poor Dave, man, all that bad, and he's just got PTSD, he's what, PTSD, PTSD, and he's post-traumatic stress disorder, and he's just, he's just done. But David is fearful that he writes this, this wonderful psalm. If you can turn to Psalm 32, let's read a little of this together. I know I quoted it Sunday, but it is important for you. Now, I would encourage you, you know, there's sometimes when we're studying, I love studying, but it's also good to praise the Lord. Yes. And that's what the book of Psalms is. is it's full of songs and songs that we can truly praise God. Yes, it is. Most of these were written, there are five main authors of the songs. And most of all these songs were, were written with a melody in mind and it was sung. So, let's do something a little bit different. If you want to read, uh, this read will have two verses apiece. And if you don't want to read, just, just pass it on and nothing will be said. Can you want to read for us? Okay. Uh, how about Martha? You want to start? Read Psalm 34, verse 22. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The bungle, the, uh, the humble shall hear it. In, in the NIV, which is, which is in the translation, it's fine. But, but I like it how it puts it, the afflicted. Yes. yes. Not just the, but the afflicted. Yes. The afflicted yes. will hear and rejoice. Yes. Who is that you're talking about? He's pouring out his own heart, but again, he's speaking to us. Yes, he is. God will want to be afflicted, but if we have yes. the Lord, we have hope. Yes. Amen. Go ahead, sister. Sister Pat. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Now let me stop you right there. This song is very unique in its writing. Yes. According to what we find in commentary, and again, you're talking about ancient history. Mm -hmm. Ancient history. But David didn't write this after the battle was over. No. This was a song that he was writing, a prophetic song for himself. Amen. How many knows the Bible says that, that, that we've got to live by faith? The substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. You know, the thing is, how many of you, to be honest with you, 
let's just be honest for a few moments. When you're healthy, everything's going good. You have faith, buddy. Everything's great. Praise the Lord. My bank. My pound is the Lord. My health is 100%. But then when things begin to change, faith, you know, there's an old song, one of the kingdom songs that talk about faith when we're up on the mountain. Right. Yeah. You know, we've got peace of mind like you've never known. But then things change. And you're down in the valley. Come on now. We all pray us. But David is this, he's prophesying this. He's reminding himself. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing. If there's times in your life that just you're overwhelmed, overcome, overloaded, overburdened, bless the Lord with your mouth. Amen. No need to serve. We read the back of the book. We win. Yes. No, your mom and daddy may not have seen these things, but everyone had their trials and everyone had their circumstances and situations. Bless the Lord. How many of you have ever? I'm going to challenge you. You can't, you can't cry and laugh. Oh, brother, you can't cry and laugh. That's not good. <laughs> but you can't be sad and happy at the same time. No, no. And I'm telling you, a good praise from the Lord to the Lord will change your disposition. That's right. Yes. Amen. Sister John? Yeah, I have a message Bible. Oh, great. Okay, I'm on five. Five, six. Look at him. Give him your warmest smile. Never hide your feelings from him. And when I was desperate, I called out, and God gave me out, uh, got me out of a tight spot. Uh, the angel of the Lord encamped around those <coughs> who fear him and <coughs> deliver them. <coughs> we taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. So we find the Apostle Paul is writing this. He's talking about the comfort of God. Let me ask you this. How is, does anyone want to testify just a short little testimony? And I apologize to those watching. I know you can't see them. But how God has comforted you in time of trouble. Yes. A true comfort. Yes, sir. sister. Who knows if this progresses and the mandates come, 
You know, we know that right now in, Hawk, in uh, Hamlin County, we know also in Greene County, I think it is in Washington County, and I'm waiting for Hawkins County. They're mandating that you wear masks. And, and I know that at Walmart, they're going to, July 20th, they're going to start mandating you go to Walmart, you have to wear a mask. Let's not get mad or hateful or aggravated. Wear a mask, witness for the Lord. And they may not be able to see our mouth, but they can see the, the smile in our eyes. Amen. That lady telling me this was so sweet. I forget where we were at. We were getting some stuff, and, and this precious lady had her mask on. I said, I have already smiled at She said, Look at my eyes. I'm smiling at you. So, anyway, well, let's go on. All right, Brother James. Brother Kip. Yeah. For fear of the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lie and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come on, family. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Kathy. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? <clears throat> Let's talk about fear of the Lord. If you're going to tell somebody about the fear of the Lord, how do you help you identify? Two kinds of fear. There's a fear of the unknown. With God, we know all the particulars. He's given us a book, you know, and, and he describes how he is and what all we when he talk we talk about reverential fear and the fact that he's just according to his word, not according to you know worry or doubt or this is gonna happen. He is not an angry God at this current time. He is not an angry God. He is a loving, nurturing God. That and and the anger, it's reserved. Yeah. You know, it's reserved. Mm -hmm. But now, at this time and everything, he is a loving God. And the fear of him is the fact that he's just. Amen. This was developed as in just. When we talk about God's just, the thing is he's impartial. He, when we stand before him, there are not going to be, one will be treated one way and another. The justice of God, one of the great things, that, and it causes me great honor to the Lord, too, is if, you know, say Kip and I, you know, if, if Kip was, was the judge's biological son, mm -hmm. and I was not, and we were caught in the same crime, the thing is, a just judge would judge us both the same and give us the same penalty. He couldn't show impartiality. And when we, we, we see the Lord, as Brother Kip says, and when we're fearing the Lord, part of it is who He is, the magnitude of who God is. And, and we, we've got to be careful not to, you know, I've learned and I'm still learning the love of God. Mm -hmm. I was raised, and I don't think it was wrong per se, but I was raised, and I've told you all this before, but with almost the fear of God, like, oh Lord, He wants me to go to I better earn it, you know. Bless the Lord, I better walk right, do right, talk right, live right. And if I say boo boo, oh no, my name just got blotted out. But that's not how God operates. His love and His grace endures. He loves you. Amen. And you know, we, we find that about in the prodigal son, the great illustration of the prodigal son. Amen. The father was always ready for the prodigal to come back. Amen. Although he didn't leave the house, still he made way for the prodigal to come back home. Just like how God wants us to come back home. He wants us to come to Him. And I wonder that He is more anxious to write my name down in the Lamb's book than He is to blot it out. He loves me. But at the same time, as Brother Kip said so wonderfully, that judgment is reserved. And He is just. But David understood that. David understood that those who trust in Him, those who love Him, man, oh man, God will bless all right, Brother Mike, you want to read next on Brother? 13, 14. 13, 14. Yeah. Keep thus none from evil, and thy lips from speaking to God. Depart from evil. Huh? I'm sorry, God was lost. Uh, Depart from evil, and do good. Seek peace, and pursue it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Seek your political agenda. <laughs> Seek your correctness. Come on, we're all God's people. We're going to... We're going to seek conservatism and do it right now. Yeah. We're going to seek peace. Seek peace. Seek peace. Can I tell you something? We've all got opinions. I'm going to tell you the nasty version I heard. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you have an opinion. You know, your opinions are like elbows. Most people have a sense, you know. Yeah. But there's a place and a time. 
you know, and we take care of them. And I can remember, honey, why didn't you come to bed? And she'd go, well, I heard babies. Can I tell you something? The Lord never neither sleeps nor does he sleep. That's right. And his ear is attentive to you. Amen. The enemy loves for you to think, well, I probably prayed and sought God and he's not heard me. No. You may be in the middle of a sick circumstance. And remember, we're going to find here in a little bit that God never promised you wouldn't face circumstances. Right. But he hears you when you pray. Yes, it's on. Amen. And to me, attentive also includes the fact that we are waiting for the cry. Because we know there's going to be some point that a child is going to need something, a diaper change, a bottle, maybe a hurting or whatever. So we are not just attentive when they cry. We are attentive waiting while they, yes. before they cry. And so the Lord knows that the enemy is, he loves to play on our playground and, you know, knock us off the slide or something. So he's waiting for those times when we're finally like, oh,
Brother James is efficient, wonderful in computers and programming. He could tell me all day about computer language and lingo, and he could say, okay, so you can sit at your computer. Now you push this button, you go over here, and you do this, you type this in, and then what you want to do is kind of face the business, and I'm going, oh, what? <laughs> but I'm, I will learn better if I watch him. Exactly. And we together go, you push here, you mm -hmm. type this in. See what I'm saying? God gives us an example. And the example is through his son, and the example is the effect of his son. We understand that, again, this is, a, this is David talking, and he understands that there's always going to be troubles. Mm -hmm. the, the righteous person, you know, it's not just the, the evil person. And again, in the 80s, we always thought, you know, if you're going through something, bless the Lord, yeah. you know, what'd you do wrong? Yeah. I mean, I beat myself up many times as a young Christian because I thought I'm going through something I brought on myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all of us, it's a circumstance that I had to face. Were the decisions that I made that might have led me to that? Well, I'm sure there were, but again, there's also there's times of car wrecks. Yeah. There's times of cars breaking down. I was thinking the other day, driving that car, what was blessed this with? Mm -hmm. Remember, I bought a car one time. I was still owing for the car. <coughs> I was on Snacks Ferry Road in Greenville, Tennessee. We're going out to Snacks Ferry, Cushman Boulevard, down there next spot, down below, down at Stephen's funeral home. Mm -hmm. I pushed the gas, and the car went broke <laughs> Not only did it go poof, but the battery had no casing around it, and it fell over. And when it fell over, that battery parked, and my engine fell off. Oh, no. I didn't bring that on myself. That no, happened. No, no, no. Now, we can't blame the Lord for stuff like no, that. We can't say, well, oh, God, what if I do? You ain't done nothing. You're living in life. You're living on earth. Exactly. Right. It's a corrupt society. You're in a corrupt world. You didn't do it. God didn't do it. It's just life. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Adam did. Adam did. There you go. <laughs> yes, sir, sir. I can um, testify to this that not one of the bones is broken. Um, a couple weeks ago, I had I went to sleep and I had a battle with the devil. Mm -hmm. And I was at my parents and I went to bed and I was scared out of my life because when I went to bed, I woke up with the demons choking me. And they were like, and all I could think of is. Song, this up here in the song. Evil will slay the wicked, but the foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. In other words, you win. That's right. You win. That's right. You see, saints of God, again, I believe and I'm convinced with all of my heart that God has a plan and God has a purpose. Yes, yes. In everything. That's why Sunday morning for the first service. I know I shocked some of you because we see it, we always say, you know, God is good all the time, all the yeah. time, God is good for our first service, folks. I shocked them. I said, you really believe that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I re you reiterated, yeah. right, Tom? Reiterated. Yeah. I said reiterated, and I got it wrong. <laughs> so reiterated. Yes. Um, you know, again, we know we're going to have some troubles, some problems, yes. some issues, but God preserves us. He helps us. Amen. He relieves us of our trouble. He's, he's always with us. We find in John, you know, I love to see what Jesus says about comfort, what Jesus says about peace, what Jesus says about our life. And we know that John said, or Jesus says in John 14, 50 through 18, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, we look at that a lot of times, and it is true. What did God say? You know, what did God say through his son? And there are the Thou shouts and the you betters and right. I hope you do. But what about also about keeping the command of loving him anyway? Yeah. Trusting him anyway. That's his will for us. And that, is, and that is will for us. And the thing is, I mean honestly, guys, let's be honest with each other. You wouldn't dream, many of you that are happily married, you know, you wouldn't dream of just throwing your partner away. You wouldn't dream of quitting your job just because you had a bad day. 
No. <laughs> Sorry, you didn't see that. I picked something. But, uh, but you know, you don't quit your job because you had a, a week of Mondays. You know, you don't you don't burn your house down because a refrigerator went out. But why is it when your troubles come, our faith gets rattled and we're like, I don't know nobody, glory, glory. Fear. Well, just a lot of things. I mean, you can only hold God accountable for what he promised. Right. And I found people, too, that all oh, God, you know, this didn't work for me. Well, did you keep his commandments? Did you keep him? Right. He says, I'm going to ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, a comforter, and will help you and be with you forever. But he's the spirit of truth. You know, the thing is, the important thing about having the Holy Spirit, and it's not just the baptism, but having the Holy Spirit himself yes. is the spirit of truth. Amen. It's not only the spirit of truth that help me see through the lies of the world. Yes. Amen. You know, we talk about fake news and fake this. Well, my gracious, the enemy is the absolute accuser of the brethren. Yes. Yes. You, you ever been having a great week, loving Jesus, and old sleep food comes and reminds you of something you did two years ago? I had people even take the class, leadership. Oh, I can't come Well, brother, well, I'm afraid to get out. I want to get out. Well, I cussed. Two years ago, last Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not good enough. I'm thinking, well, dear Lord, who's good enough here? <laughs> <laughs> not, one. not one. Amen. <laughs> we need the spirit of truth, not the spirit of personality, the spirit of opinion, but the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept it because it neither sees it nor knows it. I said this Sunday, and I want to say it again. You know, we're talking about the peace of God, and Paul was talking to the church of Corinth. The church of Corinth had a problem. They had their eyes on one another and their eyes on the community and the world, not their eyes on the Lord. And what, what John what Jesus is saying here is the world that your eyes can so get on don't, does not know Jesus. They can't understand him, and they can offer what he has to give you. I mean, it's you know, I'm reminded of the wonderful narrative where the disciples were walking from Jerusalem. And, and one of the disciples looks up and he sees all the beautiful buildings and he brags about it. And, and Jesus says, listen, um, there will not be one stone unturned or un, 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 that will still be standing. And, you know, that was both prophetic and also realistic because in just a few years, we know that, that there were wars and conquerings of Israel and Jerusalem and the temple that was so beautiful that had been rebuilt three times by this time, would later be destroyed again, yeah. and not one stone be upon another. That's right. So see, guys, I mean, what, what we put our trust and our faith in will be tested. And, and Jesus just wants us to remind that, that those who love him and put their trust in him will receive what Jesus has. It says, but you know him, for he lives in you, and he will be in he will, and he lives with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Saints of God, the thing I love about having a father is I belong. I could call on him day or night, and he was there. I mean, come on. And that's the relationship that God wants with us. We're not orphaned. We're not left here by our own devices, but we're here through the will and the work of the Lord. You know, I heard somebody say, well, well my, uh, Michael Roberts uh, his birthday was yesterday, Brother Mike and Sister Lois attended the church there in Morristown. He used to attend here, great family. But Mike was talking about turning another year older, and he said, well, it needs the alternative. <laughs> I've learned something, and I know some of you think this is silly. I'm young compared to some, and some old. But, you know, at 45 years old, my life is a lot more valuable than what it, valuable than what it was when I was 25. Mm -hmm. There's a risk I took, and things I did at 25, I mean, you can't talk me into. As we see the value of our life, I just pray that we also continue to us and elevate the value of our relationship with Jesus. To know that He is, He, you know, the world may consider Him, you know, horrible, but to those that know Him, man, He's, he's the hope, and the only hope that we have. Can I hear an amen? John 15 26. When the advent of the governor comes and all sin, the Spirit of truth goes. Out from the Father will testify about me. You remind me. It's part of my personal mm -hmm. translation, and, and I think you can do that with Scripture. You're not taking away it's, it's, right. it's, it's right. true meaning. But, but one thing about knowing the Scripture, one thing about that testimony of Him, is that, that the Holy Spirit brings the Lord. Like I sit back in my mind, 
when I'm searching for what I'm going to do and what's my next move and how am I going to respond, I forget that I'm not alone. Amen. Let's finish up. John 14, 25. Jesus says, For all this I have spoken while still with you. But when the advocate, the Holy Spirit, and the Father will send him, in my name will teach you of all things and remind you of everything that I've said to you. And this is such an important thing. Remember when Jesus goes, we talked about this in a sermon series uh, a few months ago, when Jesus came in and he talked to Thomas, he, and he talked to the disciples. The first thing out of his mouth is, is peace be unto you. That my peace, myself, my gifts, my love be to you. The will of the Father be unto you. And in verse 27, he gives us again. He's talking about leaving because they understand Jesus has already said that part of his message is, I'm not going to be with you forever. Right. Right. But I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's times he had to comfort the disciples because he would say, you know, you hate to hear that I'm going to go. But if I don't go, the comforter won't come. Amen. And we find that Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world gives. And then he says the most outlandish, audacious statement in your scripture for those of you that go through trials and tribulations. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen. I want to go back over the message because I just want us to grasp. Like I said, there's always going to be changes. And with this COVID thing especially, how many know that notice that it changes every day? Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. And if you watch one news source, another news source, another news source, you listen to, you know, the, the you know, different, different things. It changes, and you're like, oh, great, and what's going down? Oh, it's going up. What's peace I'll leave to you. Right. Yes, amen. That's what Jesus said. Amen. amen. Don't be afraid. That's right. And I, I want to encourage you, too, as we close here today. We will give you an opportunity to say something before we dismiss it. You cannot control your environment. Now, I know we've all heard and we've all read the wonderful well, Brother Stephen, the Bible said, by the faith is a grain of mustard seed, I can say to the mountain, he got removed and cast into the sea. And if I have a faith, it will be. Amen. I'll say, Lord, how many remembers just when this COVID thing came out that there was a group of televangelists yeah. who went on TV and said, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over you, COVID, and they blew. Be gone! <laughs> And the only thing that happened with that is they become a meme and a law of the world's laughing. Yeah, that's right. You see, sometimes we as Christians want to say, be gone. Yes. God has something in store. He wants to use this trial and tribulation to show the that's world right. that he's real. That's that's right. Right. One thing you're not seeing on the news is in, in Missouri and some of the other places in Minnesota where a lot of these riots and things are happening with revivals in the churches and people are being baptized in water out in the street. But it is happening. It's not in large volumes, but it's happening. That's right. That's right. We're seeing people changing its attitudes and saying, yeah. well, right. this is more important to me now than what you should be doing. Yes. So who knows how God's going to do this? That's right. He's using the churches for such a time. For such a time. Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage this family of faith. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what tomorrow holds, but I sure know who holds tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I, don't, I, just, I just don't want to live in fear. I don't want you to live with you. And I, I, again, I want to just say, you know, in the next few weeks, I don't know what we're going to have to change in the church. You know, I, like I said, Walmart, July the 20th, mm -hmm. Green County, all these other counties, I am looking to finally our, our mayor, our governor, to just say, hey, all our counties in Tennessee, we want you to mandate a mask mm -hmm. when you're out in public. It's so a Let's not get our, let's not get our tail feathers in here. <laughs> Just, right. just endure it, right. put it on. Because right. the thing is, if it's going to help somebody, my thing is, I've even thought of it like this, and I've been the greatest opponent to it. But you know, the thing is, if somebody could have more comfort and they could come in the house of God and feel the peace of your word of God, because I've got a little piece of cloth on my mouth. <laughs> now, I can't Maybe. preach with it when I spit and be all nasty, so I can't. <laughs> it'll have to come off when I preach. <laughs> yeah. You can't hear me. You know, I sound like yeah. Charlie Brown teacher.
good people, great people. Two years ago, these would be the same people who would have come to Katie and said, just a handsome boy, let me give you a hug. Yes, exactly. We're just in a different world right now. Yeah, right? And, and it's okay. God knew we would be here. Yeah. Just love one another. Sure. Let's not be easily offended. Like I always say, I said it Sunday, I'll say it again. My prayer for you is the prayer that I pray for myself. And I, and I want to explain this. I want a heart like a teddy bear. Sensitive. Yeah. Hug lady. Yeah. Very sympathetic to everybody. But I'm going to have to have skin like a lion. <laughs> See, when somebody says yeah. something yeah. like that, <laughs> then I just go, yes. sorry. Okay. Uh, yes. Sorry, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like with my son. Would you imagine trying to pull a mask on for him? Oh, I know. No. Yeah. It's not going to happen. He's special needs. He feels that if you hold him down, he feels people literally have a magic power. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, but again, guys, listen. Now, I'm trying to close. We can talk about the way this all night. There's no day. Don't be offended. Love Jesus. Just what Jesus. God is not surprised nope. at all. No. But, but he is watching. He's watching. Yeah. And remember, too, he's watching how we respond. Yeah, he is. Yes. You want to clear a store out? Huh? You want to clear a store out? A sneeze. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Or call. Yeah, you have an answer. Hey, store. Yeah, it's just here. You want grass grass? I had an ask on and sneezed at everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, again, we've got a lot to pray about. Yes, and like I said, and I'm just, just giving you heads up. Don't be afraid of it, but we may, we, we're, we're probably going to space in some seats out this Sunday and make sure that we have a little more of a social distance. We've already got the one way in, one way out. Thank you all for being so kind yeah. and, and hearing to that. And uh, we're going to keep our ears. The thing I just want to say, whatever we have to do, whatever we have to do, let's yes. keep the peace of God. Right. And let's follow the peace and love of everybody. Guess what I'm going to I like to say, uh, sometimes fear tries to come in and, and creep up on you. You know how yeah. it's just a sneaky thing. And for me, Proverbs 2, verse 5, trust in the Lord with thy heart. Yeah. And lean not unto thine understanding. So that tells me who's got this. That's right. So if I try to think, oh, should I wear a mask? Should I not? Should I do this? Should I do that? What would God do? What does he want us to do? He wants us to trust him. Yeah. Amen. Trust, right? Very good word, brother. Amen. Amen. And I thought of that too, you know. I don't see everybody really getting retaliated, screaming and hollering. Let's just be good. Amen. All right, Sister Tanya Kimberly, would you just miss us in a word of prayer? Kevin, Father, we thank you so much for this time together tonight. We ask so that you would just go with us on our way. Lord, that we'll just continually look to you and not let the, the noise of the world drown you out. Lord, we just love you and appreciate you and love you for everything you've blessed us with. Thank you, Lord, for letting us live another day, a day to come back together. Yes. We just love you and honor you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.